Have you ever thought to yourself or heard someone say, well, as long as my child is enjoying reading something, that's all that matters? Often today we think that if children are reading anything, that they are gaining great academic benefits. However, that is not true with many children's books today. How are books impacting children today? You may be very surprised to find out the answer. My name is Jenny Phillips. I'm the founder of The Good and the Beautiful. For many years, I have deeply studied and analyzed books and how they have changed over the past 100 to 150 years. I'm excited to share my fascinating discoveries with you and how they affect children. What would you discover if you compared just the first five sentences of the top five best-selling books for middle grades on Amazon.com today with the five top-selling books for middle grades in 1877? The differences are astounding. See if you can figure them out just by listening. First, here are the first five sentences of a best-selling book from 1877, Under the Lilacs. The elm tree avenue was all overgrown. The great gate was never unlocked. And the old house had been shut up for several years. Yet voices were heard about the place. The lilacs nodded over the high wall, as if they said, we could tell fine secrets if we chose. And the mullion outside the gate made haste to reach the keyhole that it might peep in and see what was going on. If it had suddenly grown up like a magic beanstalk and looked in on a certain June day, it would have seen a droll but pleasant sight for somebody evidently was going to have a party. From the gate to the porch went a wide walk paved with smooth slabs of dark stone and bordered with the tall bushes which met overhead making a green roof. Now, listen to the first five sentences of the number one best-selling book from 2019 for middle grades on Amazon.com. I know I'm not an ordinary 10-year-old kid. I mean, sure, I do ordinary things. I eat ice cream. I ride my bike. I have an Xbox. Those were both the first five sentences of the books. Let's look at one more example. Listen to the first five sentences of a best-selling book from 1877, Black Beauty. The first place that I can well remember was a large pleasant meadow with a pond of clear water in it. Some shady trees leaned over it and rushes and water lilies grew at the deep end. Over the hedge on one side, we looked into a plowed field and on the other, we looked over a gate at our master's house, which stood by the roadside at the top of the meadow was a grove of fir trees and at the bottom, a running brook overhung by a steep bank. As soon as I was old enough to eat grass, my mother used to go out to work in the daytime and come back in the evening. There were six colts in the meadow besides me. They were older than I was. Some were nearly as large as grown up horses. Now listen to the first five sentences of the number two best-selling book for 2019 for middle grades on amazon.com. I am Ivan. I am a gorilla. It's not as easy as it looks. People call me the freeway gorilla, the ape at exit eight. Okay, what do you notice in those comparisons of the first five sentences? It's pretty eye-opening. One way that books have changed in the past century and a half is that they have become much less complex. The trend today is to use a lot more simple sentence structures. The more complex the sentence structure, the harder your brain has to focus and remember. This is how books increase memory, focus, and attention span. Books made of many simple sentence structures do not make the brain work hard or focus. Thus, those books do not do well at increasing attention span, focus, concentration, or memory. What else did you notice about the comparisons of those first five sentences? Did you realize how many more describing words, adjectives, and adverbs were used in the first five sentences of the five top-selling books in 2019 combined? There were 11 adjectives and adverbs used, only 11. In these five top-selling books of 1877, in the first five sentences, there are 69 adjectives and adverbs. That is a 500% increase in the use of descriptive words. It's shocking, but there's more. In the first five sentences of those top books from 1877, 36% of the sentences use challenging vocabulary words, 40% use poetic devices, and 30% use sensory language. In comparison, in the first five sentences of those top five books of 2019, 0% of the sentences 
use challenging vocabulary words, 0% use poetic devices, and 0% use sensory language. Why does it matter and how is it affecting children? First, let's look at academics. Let's say a child is reading a book like those from 2019 that we just studied. Are they gaining much of the following potential academic benefits of a book? A varied rich vocabulary? No. Increased focus, concentration, and memory? No. Longer attention span? No. Many children's books today do not give these benefits or they do not give them very well. As I already talked about, the simplification of language and sentence structure in many books today do not give much benefit in increasing vocabulary, focus, concentration, or memory. In fact, I propose that books composed largely of simple sentences that are centered on constant thrill and adventure with little to no description or challenging vocabulary words actually hurts academics not helps. These kind of books wire the brain to expect constant thrill and excitement, ease, and instant gratification. A brain wired like this has a hard time focusing on materials that are not constantly thrilling or easy. Thus, many popular books today, if not most, are not giving much academic benefit and likely are doing harm to academics. Next, let's look at other potential benefits in books. Books have the power to improve writing skills, but not if the books do not contain model writing. Books stripped of sensory language, poetic devices, and varied sentence structures do not help with improved writing skills. Books that give deep and meaningful insights into human life can help a child gain more depth of character, stronger analytical thinking skills, greater empathy for others, and increased knowledge. Many, if not most, popular books today are not giving those benefits or are not giving them very well. In fact, many books today are damaging those things because they are desensitizing children to violence and low character, thus actually reducing the child's ability to recognize and feel meaningful insights, depth of character, and empathy for others. It's not that books of the 1800s are just about sunshine and roses. They address deep themes, neglectful parents, death, suicide, poverty, and more. But they did so in ways that were respectful and inspiring, and they never made wrong behavior look like the norm. In children's books for middle or older grades in the early 1800s and 1900s, it is extremely rare to find any instances of bad behavior or bad attitudes being made to look acceptable. God and faith were main themes in the vast majority of books from the 1800s for children. God and faith are almost non-existent now in children's books for middle and older grades today. Today when I review books, it is rare to find a best-selling children's book for middle to older grades that is wholesome and appropriate. They are there, but they are not common. Once you really start evaluating it, it is amazing to see the flood of toxic messages that are destroying character and weakening families, and parents have no idea. For an eye-opening look at this topic, watch my video, It's Time to Be Brave About Books. Just to give you a quick idea of how many negative messages may be packed in your children's books without you realizing it, let's look at one series of books for young children that may seem harmless and fun. It is a best-selling series about a funny little mouse. In my study of this series, in addition to very low literary value, I found the following negative messages made to seem funny and acceptable. Negativity, arrogance, squabbling, name-calling, crudeness, self-centeredness, whining, rudeness, potty language, and making fun of family relationships. I am the first to admit that I bought all of the books in that series for my children when they were young because they loved them and I was so excited that my children loved to read. I had no idea. These books have no nutrients, no literary value, and they teach children to be rude and arrogant and selfish. Why are we giving our children these kind of books when they are gaining nothing but ill rewards from them. In my study of books from the late 1800s and early 1900s, I have found that books have changed and they are changing our children. I invite you to join the movement to return to literature that is pure and powerful. If you wanna know what a child is becoming and what they are headed for, look at the books they are reading. I have a personal witness to the life-altering changes that come into a child's life
when they immerse themselves in learning and books that are truly good and beautiful. Books have changed history, books have changed nations, and books have changed people. The kind of books that develop the noble character of people like Abraham Lincoln and Thomas Edison are not the kind of books that you now see on the best-selling children's book list today. Let me give you one more eye-opening comparison before I close. The first 50 sentences of the children's classic book, Otto of the Silver Hand, in addition to having many complex sentence structures, has an astounding number of adjectives and adverbs, 140. In contrast, a modern book for the same grade level, Diary of a Sixth Grade Ninja, has only 20 adjectives and adverbs. Additionally, Diary of a Sixth Grade Ninja contains no figurative language and no elevated vocabulary words, while Otto of the Silver Hand has 30 elevated vocabulary words and 14 uses of figurative language, including beautifully written instances of personification, similes, and metaphors. The first 50 sentences of Otto of the Silver Hand also has 28 uses of vivid sensory language describing sound, touch, taste, and smell while the first 50 sentences of Diary of a Sixth Grade Ninja does not contain a single use of sensory language describing sound, touch, taste, or smell. We are losing generations of children who can recognize, appreciate, and seek out good and beautiful books. Parents and teachers, you can change that. Watch our other videos about books on our blog, goodandbeautiful.com. Have your children watch these videos with you. Help spread this message to the world and bless others. Our world needs light. Our world needs a return to good literature. At The Good and the Beautiful, we have searched through thousands and thousands of books to find those that are of the highest literary, moral, educational, and entertainment value. You can find our top recommendations on our free The Good and the Beautiful book list on goodandbeautiful.com. We also republish wonderful and worthy books that have gone out of print, and they are available on goodandbeautiful.com. We love bringing good literature back to the world. Drop by drop, every book is filling your child's mind and shaping who they are. Are the things filling your child's mind clean? As a parent and as a teacher, you can greatly impact a child's life. You can truly change a child's life through blessing them with good and beautiful books. Bring your children to the best literature. Help them to climb to higher places through worthy books. Bring them to places and people and language that will leave them strong and immovable in following the Savior Jesus Christ. Fill their lives with purity and beauty and joy through the books that they read.